to take advantage of this flex exam because I am, I've been actually testing. I haven't done many full tests because I completely burn out and I, and I didn't find it productive. So I was doing like two, like two section tests every day. And then I started getting into threes, but to a point where my accuracy was really like doing really well. So now that the exam is the LSAT flex, is going to be that. I think I'm just going to take advantage. I, I, I'm, I don't like to make like educated guests. I like to be more like, you know, factual, but I do think that right now situations with law school and LSAC, like they need students. So I don't think they're going to be putting out any of these like really difficult sections or very difficult games. And I've honestly put in so much work that I'm like, I think I can do well with the, with this one. So I'm going to, I'm aiming for this. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm registered for the main exam. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I yeah. think you're doing exactly the right thing. You're being proactive. And I agree that law schools, they do need students. They are going to be flexible with students about the deadlines and they're going to treat the LSAT flex like any other administration of the LSAT. They have a lot of faith in LSAC to administer this properly for the scores to be equivalent and valid. So I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, Sam, what, what would be most useful for you in our conversation today around preparing? Um, I guess kind of in, okay. So what I, I actually have everything inside in front of me. I think that for, so logic games I've mastered, I get perfect scores except for like maybe one or two games. I'll do something like a silly mistake. And then I, I remember that. So my biggest two things where I've been struggling is logical reasoning. I put in a lot of time and I've seen a big improvement for where I was like starting off, like getting like 13, 14 right now I'm averaging um, like 17 to 19. Right. So that I'm like really happy with that. But I noticed that in that section, I, I, I'm very, not that I'm slow, but like the first 10 questions, which are supposed to be easier, I want to pick up the pace on those so that it gives me that more time to work on. But I feel like I do better on the hard last questions and I do worse on the beginning, easy 10 questions. I don't know why. So that's, yeah, that's actually that. fairly common. I think it comes from overthinking things. A lot of times students who are scoring really well, they know that crit critical analysis and being skeptical of things is useful. Of course, on the LSAT, you want to be skeptical of all these flawed arguments. But the problem is that on the easier questions, you don't want to second guess yourself. You want to go with your gut. Those questions are as easy as they seem. There's not a whole lot of tricks there. And so if something seems good, don't think to yourself, oh, that is too easy. It couldn't possibly be something so obvious. In fact, go with your gut on those. Save that skepticism for the tougher questions that really require it, that are exhibiting more weird arguments and weird flaws on those first 10 questions in logical reasoning they are typically as easy as they seem okay so i thought that was me just like like i second guess myself a lot and i hate it so so that's why that so i guess for me yeah really what i really wanted to get out of this uh session today was kind of like your advice on like how to move faster because i put in the time and i really was focused first i started taking tests for no reason i did everything you did like i was taking yeah. tests and like I was burned out. It was so unproductive. So then I focused a lot on accuracy and I realized that on each of the sections, like of course with anybody, if you were to take off the time in the beginning, even if I had no time, I wouldn't have the accuracy. So that's that was a big jump for me. But then now um, it's really balanced. I think it's going to just really come down to my reading comp is my worst section. I feel that, um, it, I mean, I, I've understood, like I've kind of tried to like take every section of the test, like, I noticed, I noticed that it's testing a different skill completely. So it's kind of like when you're presented that like section, I'm like, okay, switch like your, like your, like what you're supposed to be doing, like focus on this skill, focus on this skill. But I, and I think I've ma not mastered, but definitely mastered it for logic game. I'm super happy with that. For logical reasoning, it's more like a flu, like trying to get fluent with the different types of skills. But then for, I guess for reading comp, I've never really under, I've never been able to just get it. You know, like even like if I do untimed, like I'll get like 15, the best I've ever gotten. No, this is not reading comp. This is reading comp. The best I've like, the best I've gotten in reading comp was, yeah, like 17, right? And then the worst is like 11, 13. And it's like, it really hurts. Cause it, like, it, it, cause that's what's hurting my, my, my score in the end. And I really, I mean, I started my first diagnostic, I, I got a 147. And then now with where I'm at, like I'm, I'm shooting for a higher than like a 160 and higher. Um, I have been studying for about a year. So, so I, I'm not, I, I don't feel like I'm being unrealistic, like with my goals. Um, I, so, so my goal is to take that May exam and, um, 
I know that luck is a part of it too. So if I just get the, a reading comp passage that's not too difficult and I do really well in LR and I kill the logic game, I think I can get that score I want. Um, I think my strategy, like what well, my plan is going to be that I'm going to take that main exam and see how I do. And then from that, I guess, kind of figure out if I should take the next one or if I should, if I should apply for the next fall and take it a little bit closer to that time with more practice. But I'm sorry, I know I'm going in circles. I feel like- no, Not at all. Going. It's useful to get the background. And I think you're absolutely right that you're aiming for May, but you could still retake if you need to. That yeah. would be totally fine. I also want to think right now, since you've got about a month, maybe slightly more until you take the May LSAT flex, how could you set yourself up for success on the reading comp specifically? So what could you do to improve your understanding there? Because if it's variable so much, we don't want to just hope for easy passages. Obviously, there is luck, as you said, and that would be nice if they were easy for you. But you do have some time. And if you have time in your schedule as well to I really do. make the most of your of your prep over this next month or so. And so I want to go over some different possible strategies you could use for reading comp specifically. Now we know digital LSAT, LSAT flex regardless, it's going to be reading on a screen. So you want to do as much of your prep on screen as possible, getting used to reading that difficult dense text on the screen. Try to do the prep tests online instead of out of the books if you can, because it is a okay. little bit different. The okay. other thing is some different exercises and drills you could play around with. Do you feel like when you read a passage, you're able to walk away with the main idea? Some, main idea, always. I can always Good. catch it because I've, I realize that it's, the, it's whatever the author's try, like the author's, like when the author comes out, I've realized it's a big deal, whether it's their, um, their view, their opinion, you know, if it's positive, it's negative. I'm, I'm very good with the main point questions. I'm very bad with the, so like the global questions. The global questions are good. Um, I'm very bad with the like specific questions. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like the- The detail or into ones? Yes, like what did this mean? I, I get a little like, you know, like, oh, like what in this passage did they mean by, by saying this word? And then it's like, I'm having trouble, you know, I, I second guess myself a lot. Yeah, okay. So in that case, what you might want to do is after you read the passage, of course, you knock out those global main idea questions. Then for the detail-oriented questions, you could, as a drill on your own, prephrase or predict the correct answer without looking at the choices whenever possible. So cover up the choices, maybe with a post-it if you're doing it out of a book. Otherwise, just do it on your scratch paper, cover it up with your hand in some way, and just write out your own prediction of what the correct answer would be. And then see later if you can match it up with the correct answer. Obviously, your phrasing and articulation will be simpler than LSAC's, but you can get a sense of whether you're on the right track or not. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like like prephrasing. Uh, that's actually helped me in the logical reasoning. I do that a lot. When I, when I, before I go into the, like after I finish the stimulus and I go into the questions, I'm like, I think this is the answer and I, it's usually there. Yeah. Every once in a while, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's definitely something I can try. I've done, a, it's like, I, I've realized it's another thing that it's like, the, the more I've done actual practice tests, and when I say tests, I mean like test questions and test passages, I tend to start getting it, but I don't know what it is about the reading comp. I guess like I'm focusing too much on the content and the, like, you know, the, the science questions and like the science topics, and I guess that's what's throwing me off. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, on your initial read, on your initial read, don't get too bogged down in the details. I take very long on my initial read. How long, how many minutes? I want to say my first, well, sorry, I'm wrong. My first initial read will be about five minutes, like four to five minutes, but I will always reread it before going to the questions. Because this is what I've, again, this is with my practice, what I've kind of seen. It's like, it doesn't care about you knowing the details. The details are there. It's on the page. So it's kind of like I've. I started to break down each paragraph and then kind of say like, okay, opponents, uh, uh, advocates, uh, this person's viewpoint, like authors present, like stuff like that. And then, so when I go to the questions, I kind of know which paragraph to go to. So that's what I've been really focused on, but it takes me a lot of time to like, you know, so I'm not really reading. I'm reading more for like, um, reading and matching kind of like okay this is in this part this is in this part like so that's what i've been reading i haven't been really reading fluently and just going to the questions i've been like reading and then breaking each 
paragraph that because it's it, I, I really struggle with the section so I like I was desperate I'm like I gotta like figure something out that's a good approach for untimed practice to dissect okay. what's going on but that just isn't going to work under timed conditions clearly if you're spending, yeah, if you're spending, well, here's the, let's, let's look at by the numbers though if you've got four to five minutes devoted only to your initial read and you've got about seven questions per passage that's giving you something like 30 30 seconds per question if yeah. you've got yeah. Seven questions all together. So I actually, Not enough. I, I'm, 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 I've been a big realist on this exam because I realized in the beginning, like we were just taught so wrong. And I, I don't know. I just, I feel better when I'm a realist. It's not like, oh, I'm being hard on myself, but it's like I told myself I'm never gonna get all four passages, and that's okay because I can still do well. And so I, I was always focusing on because I didn't think I had enough time to get the four. So I've been trying to focus on perfecting uh, just three, but I can't even do two. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, I'm struggling hard on the, t on the exam because I'm like, if I just do three passages, right, with my accuracy on logic games and logical reasoning, I'm okay. You know, I'm not going to get a 170, but I think I can get in that 160s. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. But so I, I thought that one passage wasn't going to hurt me just because of how well I'm doing on the other sections. So I was trying to do the three, but even three, it's like I do two and then I'm like, rushing the third one and then my two weren't even that accurate so then it's so that's where i struggle yeah i hear you i, I agree that doing three passages only could work for you if you're aiming for a 160 but you've got to get really high accuracy on those three and yeah. so if we th look at it that way you've got about 12 minutes per passage in that case that's four I mean. minutes could be okay then you've got I think it's eight a minutes. bad strategy i just think being so close to the exam it's a not, not a lot's going to change except for my approach, which might be able to fix it, but I've, I haven't been focusing on aiming for like the, the four. The four yeah. No, I think this is fine, but in that case, I would focus more on the prephrasing prediction technique that I suggested for you to okay. get a better sense of your understanding of the details. But again, not trying to memorize all the details up front, rather noting where they are in the passage so you can find them when you need them. And you could take some notes on the scratch paper, just not too much. Okay. Yeah. I definitely highly, highly know. I, I, I saw, I, cause I've seen a lot of your videos and I, I always read your reading comps and I'm like, like, dang it. I'm like, cause I've, I've, I've realized like a lot of this is like, you have to have the foundation. If you don't have the foundation, it's a guessing game. And I, I tend to do really bad because on, on the guessing, I'm more like, it's all about confidence too, you know? So, um, so for the reading comp, yeah, I was just trying to like get that foundation down, but I clearly lack something important in that. And I think it's that I get lost in the, the details and in the subject matter, which is what used to happen to me in the logical reasoning. But because I guess it's so short and kind of like the question stem directs you with what you should be doing and like what type you should be focusing on. Are you weakening? Okay, look for a gap. Are you, are you looking for the conclusion? You know, like stuff like that. So I feel like logical reasoning gives you more of a direction versus reading comp. It's, easier in the question times because they're all like must be trues it's not like you're like trying to figure out you know it's just like whatever is there but i don't know why i have just a lot more trouble with that type of skill well most of them are must be trues but then the tougher ones in reading comp are more analogous to difficult logical reasoning like strengthen weaken and parallel and such yeah which i don't see many of i don't no, know they're rare they're rare and they're more difficult and so i would certainly skip them and save them for last when necessary yeah. But those okay. are the ones where you're, where you're, where you're going to want to slow down more. And during your review, again, prephrase, predict. If it's a parallel question and reading comp, make sure you fully understand the source method of reasoning in the stimulus. Okay. A great example of this, by the way, is there's a, a passage on the Chinese talk story with Maxine Hong Kingston. I believe it's in the prep test 54, somewhere okay. around there. Look at the parallel question in that passage because it's extremely difficult, but yeah, slowing down it. and dissecting it. I actually did that one. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's a tough one. Let me see, 54, 297. Yeah, we don't have to discuss it now, but just down the line, review that kind of question to really make sure that you understand the initial method of reasoning. Because if you don't get that, you're not going to get the answer. But it okay. requires in-depth analysis during your review to make sure you get all the ins and outs of what they're talking about. Okay. Okay. So then I guess just I, to wrap it up, I know this is just only 15 minutes and thank you again so much. I really appreciate this. No, of course. Um, I guess my, my biggest thing is kind of like, like in the sense of like, you know, every student is different. And for me, for my goals, I would, I'm trying to get in this fall because I've actually been studying for a year. 
So that was my intention to get in 2020. I want, I'm a, I live in Florida, Miami. I'm not sure. Where are you from? I'm in New York. New York. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. It's tough over there. I'm sorry to hear that. It is yeah. these days, but you know, we're hanging in there. Love Florida, okay. by the way. It's awesome. Yeah. No, yeah, I've been, I, I work in a restaurant, so I've been unemployed for like two months now. But um, yeah, so, so my goal, so my schools are like University of Miami. I'm not sure if you've heard of those schools, yeah. University of Florida. And um, to get in with like a full ride, I just, I need a, like a 162 for a UM. So, so I don't think it's, it's very, diff, it's, it's very hard or very out of my reach. So I guess, again, my, my question was kind of like, bec- for the, for this main exam, and then I'll worry about the rest later. Should I have a different approach in like, for example, in the reading comp in, for example, like, should I just focus on the three passages or should I, like you said, like start, I have a month so I can kind of change what I've been doing. Should I just do the initial read, go through the questions or am I, cause I feel like what I'm doing is hurting me and it's not helping me. I think that for now you've yeah. got a month. It's about Pacing and it's about endurance. Things change a little bit because you've got three pa- three sections on the LSAT flex, not yeah. four. So that changes the practice test rhythm a little bit. And oh, yeah. so since they, I know they just announced LSAT flex last week, that changes things a lot. So make sure that you're doing several timed exams in the LSAT flex format, three sections back to back, no break, one of each. See if it takes you more time to get warmed up or maybe you're able to flow more smoothly. You don't run out of steam. So I would say just do lots of timed exams, maybe two per week if you can, if you have the time in your it's schedule. It's not a lot because I've actually been, I've been, I've been doing about three a week and I felt, and I, I mean, I'm kind of tired, like my head, I'm like losing it a little, but um, I didn't know if that was a lot or if it was like, I don't know. I wasn't sure what is enough. So I actually, this week, because of last week, I burned out. I did three. I did like Monday, um, Tuesday, I just reviewed uh, Wednesday I took it and Friday I took it um this week I was like yesterday I did one section and then I reviewed like a bunch of things that I've been like struggling with like that section and today I was going to take another section like so this whole week I was just doing like one sections and focusing on like like then adding next week to two sections and then getting back to the three but I wasn't sure what is considered enough like well t- you don't want to burn out and three exams timed per week is, is often enough. too much for a lot of students because you've also got to review what you're doing in depth. Yeah. Now, two exams per week for some people might not be too much, but I think in your situation, it's perfectly fine given that you've got the time and also because LSAT Flex, you're doing three timed sections, not five. So it's not quite as grueling and there's also not as much material to review. But since Virtually nobody has been doing three section exams because that's never been the format before. Mm-hmm. I would suggest for you, get used to that. Get used to doing three section exams and reviewing them and see how your flow goes along okay. the way. I'd be okay. focusing on that just to be, replicate the test day conditions. And also, of course, getting used to taking it at home and preparing to take it at home. So you're not going to be doing a test center. You're not going to have other people distracting you, but you also want to create a comfortable, quiet environment where you're doing your practice tests, the same place you'll do the online LSAT as well. The thing I would add on for you is just reading comp with review, the prephrasing like we discussed. I think that's the biggest thing you should be trying out and then seeing if doing three passages really works for you. You've you've been playing with it before. I would continue playing with it. You could get 162 doing only three passages if your performance on the other sections is high enough. So see how that goes. And then keep in mind for a future potential retake, maybe you'll want to up your reading comp game further if you aim for a retake, let's say in June, July or beyond. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. That's been my, my, my biggest weakness and I've never been able to figure it out. I don't know why. Like I've I've been a lot of practice. I've read in a lot of passages and I just doesn't, it doesn't click for me. I don't, I don't, I don't think that I'm incapable. I just, it just hasn't. So I've just tried to like focus on the entire exam and, um, and be a little bit, you know, like humble and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Well, I'll also send you some links to other resources I have. I know you've been watching what I've got on IGTV. I've also got plenty on YouTube and the podcast and the LSAT blog website as well. And so maybe there's something there that could help you further too. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, Sammy. Glad to help. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Wow. Um, I mean, definitely the, the prephrasing, I never, I never thought about that in for the reading comp. For some reason, I didn't think it was capable of doing. 
Um, I also think that for sure, how do I, like testing, like actually practicing and then testing is completely different skills. So it's important to be able to like work on both of them. So I definitely think like how you mentioned, like doing the the, the three section test and getting really in the environment. I haven't been doing um, my practice tests on computer. And I think that's a big thing that it's been hard for me to accept that it completely turned digital because I'm so old school and I love paper. So definitely that was a great uh, advice. I'm going to start taking practices on the computer. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I thought it wouldn't be a big difference, but I think it is, especially for reading comp, it's going to be uh, challenging. So I'm going to start taking them on. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's exactly spot on. Well, I'm glad we connected. Sammy, please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all. As yes, I definitely forward. will. If I actually happen to take the, um, a test after the May, if I need it, I'm definitely going to reach out to see if maybe we can do some tutoring, like private tutoring and stuff like that. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd be glad to help. Just reach out and we can talk more about it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.